Hi there, my name is Leisure B and this is the first part of, as well as the introduction to, Jung Workshop's Building the Tonecraft Studio. In this five part tutorial series we're going to show you exactly what we did to build a relatively solid mixing and composing room on a low budget. Me and Andy have both been making music since 2001 and have combined our skills in composing and mixing tracks as electronic duo Indie Kings since 2009. We've always been working in rooms which can be described as bottom range at best, but this is now all about the change. You see, Andy has just become a father, and hence he had to move his studio from the living area into a more suitable place. As you can see in part 2 of this tutorial series, we first tried to get an existing room inside his house ready for some serious studio work. However, after a couple of heavy acoustic adjustments and the according tests, it turned out that the room was completely useless as a serious studio space. Since this video series is not a showcase on how smart and cool we are, we decided to add this fuck up along with a couple of other dumb things we did to the tutorial. It should therefore be considered a how to as well as a how not to fix your acoustics. We've constantly monitored our findings by making measurements with REW. REW is a free high quality acoustic measurement tool which can guide you through the process of improving your room for audio purposes. You can download and experiment with the software for free, but we strongly advise you to purchase the Behringer ECM 8000 microphone for 50 bucks and also to get a good quality decibel meter for the calibration of the program. The different parts of this series are going to be published over a period of time and at the moment you're watching the intro. This means that we're not going to be explaining a whole lot here, we'll just skip through parts 2 to 5 and give you a short overview of each part with a couple of graphic examples. Part 2 to 5 will be appearing on Human Workshop's YouTube channel over the next couple of months. Part 2! As I've mentioned, part 2 of this series will be about exploring the possibilities of your existing room. Since you will find a lot of hints and tricks on this subject on the internet, as well as a large range of firms who will sell acoustic panels and treatment for your existing room, the possibilities seem almost endless here. We're going to try to bring some method to the madness. The initial and main problem in our room was the bass response. This means that the bass wasn't being properly played back since the reflection of the room made it cancel itself out in certain points while doubling in others. Even though the doubling areas were very inviting for the composition stage of our project, for the mixing stage it made it almost impossible to determine the real overall bass spectrum of the track we were working on. We've tried a couple of solutions to the problem, including building a new acoustic wall in the back of the room, filling all the corners with bass traps, creating an acoustic diffuser and of course extensive experimenting with the monitor placement. We've measured each experiment with REW to determine how effective the treatment was. So this is what you can expect in part 2. Part 3 In part 3 of this series we're going to take a look at how we can solve the problems which came up in part 2. In short, this means that Andy had decided to build a completely new room in his barn since none of the room in his house were suitable for quality playback of audio for professional projects. We'll give you an overview of the reasons why the decisions for a completely new room were made and how we commenced designing the room and collecting the materials as well as the building of the overall structure. We'll share with you the choices we've made with the room materials in cost versus usability and we'll supply you with a detailed price list and timetable so you know just what about you're up to when starting out something like this. Part 4 In part 4 of this tutorial, we're going to take a look at what REW said about the conditions of the newly built empty room. Andy and me are going to present our solutions to the current problems and show you how we've built the bass traps and acoustic panels used to combat the negative acoustic responses. Bass traps and acoustic panels are an especially dubious subject when it comes to creating an optimal audio space. And there's an enormous amount of purchasable solutions as well as an even larger amount of opinions out there. We're most certainly not going to claim to have any solution here for any other space than the one we've been treating, but this video should be interesting for anyone who is thinking about acoustically treating his or her room with bass traps or panels. Part 5 In the final part of this series we're going to take a look at the outside of the studio. Also, we'll show you which speakers we've checked out for the new setup and how and why we've made our final decision. Also, we'll have a look at the optic design of the studio by taking a glance at the completed room. Since the room here hasn't just been built for the fun of it, well not just, we'll give you a short overview of our current projects plus a glimpse on things to come. And also, what we might be able to do for you. 
Right, that's it for this introduction. For more information, please visit the article regarding the studio build on humanworkshop.com or visit the studio's website at www.tone-craft.de. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for part two. The Failed Attempt!